Okay, hi Joel. Hello. Hi everybody. Uh, we had a new release. So that's why you told me to do a video. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes. Can you guess a version number? Um, well, you showed me the version number, so it's one, two, three. Okay. Yes, it is uh, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and I have slides for you to show and to tell you everything about the new release. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as usual, uh, tip of the day. Well, this time it is educational tip. Uh, so we have these two methods, uh, locator fill and locator type, mm -hmm. which you can use to fill in inputs. So we recommend everybody to use locator fill rather than locator type. Well, both are fast, but locator fill is faster. Um, and you can think about fill as if it you paste a value into the input rather than typing it manually on the keyboard. It, can I object to the tip of the day? I disagree with the tip of the day. Uh, locator at fill is great, um, but if your JavaScript code listens to key down specifically, you need to use locator.type. Yes. So if you if you know what the key down event is or the key up event, then you have to use locator.type. If you're like, what is that? I don't know what's going on. Definitely use locator.fill. Exactly. So my recommendation would be to start with locator.fill, and mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, it means that your form actually listens to the key press, uh, key down events. Oh, then if, you if, switch to locator. If you have a form, you should definitely use locator.fill, and if it doesn't work, then it's a bug. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. sometimes you don't have a form. Um, agreed. Yes. Okay. Nice discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on. So the agenda for Playwright One Twenty Three. Uh, we have quite some exciting stuff. Uh, so let's jump right into the network replay. Okay. And I have a demo for you. So I'll share my screen, entire screen. So um, I have a real simple test. It just navigates to some website. And actually, let me show you this website. Uh, this is uh, a version of Hacker News, mm -hmm. which uses GraphQL internally. Okay. So you can navigate to commands and back and, you know, Hacker News. Mm -hmm. So I want to test the UI of this uh, website. Now, if I, you know, just have this test that does something there, uh, it actually will use the internet, and the actual, um, will send the request to the actual server. Yeah. Let's actually see if it works. Mm -hmm. and yeah it does work mm -hmm. sweet now however I want to make sure that all the GraphQL requests are mocked so that I can test only the UI whereas all the data is uh, fixated so now we have a new API and I will show it to you Let's say route from har and I can actually I'll store all my mocks into the hards folder and this one will be Hacker News of Har. And I want to save only the API GraphQL requests, right? Okay. I'm following along. For people that okay. might be a little bit lost right now, a Har file is a file that stores a recording of, of network activity. Yes. Uh, so, thanks, Joe. Yes. Uh, now, this will almost work, but however, I don't have this har file right now, right? Yeah. So I can say update true right here. Ooh. And it will actually generate this har file. So let's give it a shot. Okay. So the first time we run, it's going to make this har file. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You see okay. It? So I have my hars folder here. Yeah. And th this is my har file. Can you open it in DevTools? Uh, maybe. <laughs> this is how people can know that the videos aren't scripted. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, I should go to my hearts. Sure. Cool. Here it is. Okay. Kill file. okay. 
And actually, there is one interesting bit. You see this underscore file. Yeah. This is all the content that is actually hashed and extracted from the file. OK. So is that also on disk? Yeah, oh, these right are the, oh. the contents. Yeah, so yeah. we can actually go. This is the request, the GraphQL yeah. request. And here is the response. Mm -hmm. OK, so now actually I can go back. And I should not forget to you know, have fault here. Mm -hmm. Now I can just run it. And this time it will run against the this API. Now, I was thinking about a way how to prove you that it actually uses the stored uh, GraphQL. Well, you could and turn your internet off. Then, well, we are recording, right? Oh, yes. This is <laughs> uh, so, oh, yeah, I need to step over. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. So it's 52.13355. Oh, you're going to go up with something? No, I'll just uh, go here. Mm -hmm. It's 54.58 uh, to LN. Okay. So it's already different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I did not can like you edit that JSON file. Oh yeah, you definitely can. Okay. Yeah, it would it's, be just it's not yeah. like hashed or checked or something. Uh, it's not hash checked. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, this is a demo. Let's get back to our presentation. So that's very cool. Uh, when would our users want to use that? So anytime you use API mocking, like before you might have been using uh, page.route, for example. Yeah, that's, that's what I was API using. Yeah. Yes. Now you, you can just use the route from HAR instead. Mm -hmm. And rather than doing this mocks manually, you can actually just populate the whole thing. Hmm. Um, Would you now, recommend committing that HAR file into my repository? Or should you? Should yeah, you, you definitely should. OK. You, you should commit it, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, so uh, presentation recap, uh, demo recap. So we can record uh, using this new update true flag and we replay without this update flag. And we actually can use CLI to record har of all everything we do in the browser, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Okay, um, next topic, advanced routing. So, Let's say we have these two routes now. The first route is removing the header from all the requests, and the second header uh, route actually aborts all the images. And let's say we have a website, which is in the bottom right corner, which is sending a request for style. OK, hold on. I need to, I need to, I need to process what's going on. Okay, we've got two routes. Uh, I will actually lead you through what's going on. So you, you, you shouldn't think right now. I'll just okay. show you what's going on. Like you just, we have this program uh -huh. and we have this website. Uh, mm -hmm. And this website is actually sending a request to style.css. Yeah. Now we have two routes and the last route is being hit first. Mm -hmm. And it checks if the request is an image request. It is mm -hmm. not. So it falls back. And this fallback is actually a new API. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this fallback means that our request will be moved to the next route handler. Okay, that's what I was thinking about because I couldn't remember if if previous uh, routes were called or if you called route. So if yeah. you do route continue, it wouldn't call the second routing function. It wouldn't. Yeah. And now you have fallback that does exactly this. Okay. So now the second route will actually remove the header, and you know the request will fly to the internet. Okay. So so maybe. If we were designing the API today, continue would be like continue to web, like it continue goes Maybe. to the server and fallback actually, goes to player. I actually like the, the fallback. No, no, I like fall. Uh, I like fallback. I'm not. I'm not objecting. I'm just uh, yeah, yeah. writing a note to myself in my head about what continue means. Yeah, continue might be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now um, a note on the route order. Let's consider a real complicated use case when we have multiple different routes. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have four of them. And these routes can be actually split into two groups. Here are two piles, mm -hmm. um, context routes on the left and page routes on the right. Now, when we have a request, the request will first hit all the page routes in the reverse order. Mm -hmm. and then go to the context routes and we'll hit all the context routes in the reverse order. 
Hopefully your code doesn't depend on that because it seems very confusing to have to think through which route you yeah. hit with order. I, I agree, but this is just for you to know. You, usually yes. you don't need to, to interact with this kind of uh, diagram. Great. Uh, now- it Wouldn't uh, pass code review. Probably. <laughs> uh, another now, note here is that uh, you usually want to use context routing rather than page routing because for context routing, you will actually route from pop-ups. If page happens yeah. to spawn any yeah. any you know windows, then these windows will be handled by the context routing. Yeah, page routing is feels a little bizarre to me. I'm not sure when you'd want to do it. I always prefer context routing as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, next chapter: component tests update. Um, few things happened in this release. First and foremost, uh, View Two got support via the new experimental CT View Two package. Cool. Please give it a try. Mm -hmm. uh, next, uh, create React app. By default, uses .js files to host their JSX components. Mm -hmm. It was not supported before. It is supported now. Yep. Then if you had uh, components that are fragment components that had multiple top-level elements, this was uh, required some workarounds before. Now it just works out of the box for you. And finally, if you used ESM mode with TypeScript and you were generating source maps, this combination didn't work before and it does work now. Cool. Sweet. Moving on. We have first assertions update. And we have two things here. The first is the new method to have values. Now you can assure that a select element with multiple selections Ooh. have multiple values. Ooh. I haven't okay, seen one of these in the wild in the web in a long time, but they yes, are a nice they, control. They do exist, actually. Yeah. Yeah, folks wanted this. Okay, and the next one is actually the ignore case option, which landed for both to have text and to contain text. And now, no matter if you have a string or a regex, it will actually ignore case there. So if you have a regex, it will cut transform it into a register. Okay, I have I... questions. So sure. so if if I have a reg wait it makes sense your have... case makes perfect sense to me if I have a string. But if yes. I have a regex, can I can specify will... in the regex whether or not it ignores case. And so this you takes can. priority over that? This takes priority over that, yes. Okay. For consistency. Okay. No questions? More questions? No, no questions. You, you broke my brain with the regex thing. I'm thinking about how, how yeah. this was implemented. Hmm? What happens if my regex has capital letters in it, but if I say ignore case true? No issues. Ignore case is ignore case. OK. OK, uh, miscellaneous. Uh, Quite a few things here. Uh, first, you have a new service workers option. Now you can disable all the service workers if you don't like them, if they stay in your way. Next, and this is a cool one, you can add .zip extension for your HAR files. And this bo works both in route from HAR and then all the record HAR option. Uh, then we will pack all the HAR file and zip it for you. Okay, and this and includes we'll like, that, as well. like when we recorded the HAR before, we had a folder with a HAR file and a JSON file for the request. So yes, that's all going to be, so the whole folder is in a zip. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes every, it, it zips all the resources and the HAR file cool. together. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we have a minimal HAR mode. If you want to save a HAR just for the record and replay and you use the record HAR functionality, you can use mode minimal. And this mode is used by default if you use route from HAR API. Okay, what does minimal HAR do? It strips some timings. Okay, when when it's would I not smaller. want to use minimal HAR? Uh, you will always use route from HAR, so it's always minimal. So okay, so go. so I guess I, I'd be able to see the difference if I like open the HAR in DevTools. Something will be missing. Mm, probably. Okay. So I never open HARs and DevTools. Yeah. I just use well, them. For, I, I do all the time. That's What else do you do with HARs? Let me know what you see there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have Ubuntu 22 support now. And for JavaScript, we have a Docker container, which is called 
v one twenty three zero Jemmy. Jemmy is the new code name for Ubuntu twenty two. And then we have API testing for Playwright for .NET. Highly requested feature. Yeah. And I think now all the language ports have API testing available. Cool. And uh, this is it. Uh, summary, we have uh, network replay. We have advanced routing. We are route fullback. We have many new things coming to component tests. Uh, we have a bunch of new web first assertions and different miscellaneous things, such as most notably uh, Playwright for .NET got API testing and Ubuntu 22 support. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is it for this release. If you like what we do, uh, please uh, head over to our documentation. Uh, do not hesitate to file issues and give us a star on uh, GitHub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are also available on Slack. Uh, well, us not much anymore. We get too much issues on GitHub. Mm -hmm. So if you do want our attention, file an issue. Mm -hmm. If you want to chat with player community, which is vast these days, go to Slack mm -hmm. and uh, Twitter and YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, yeah. everybody. See you in one two four. See you in one two four. <laughs>